Hi everyone, my name is Caleb Witzkin. I am in Physics 106 with Professor Corte, and today we're going to be talking about electric potential energy. Super exciting, I know. So, first of all, something we need to understand is uh, electric potential energy is very similar to gravitational potential energy. I'll just do a quick uh, flashback to Physics 105, where we have our hill, and let's just say you have uh, you and your friend are going to go sledding. So you're up here on top of the hill and you have a certain amount of gravitational potential energy due to your height above the ground, which is equal to, potential energy is equal to mass times gravity times height, right? So, next time you want to go sledding, remember this equation because it's obviously very important, but the most important thing to remember uh, about this equation is that you have energy in reference to the ground or to some point here, which is basically how it works with electric potential energy. It's not so much important where the ball is or where you and your friends are, it's more important where you are in reference to something else. So the change in potential energy is what we're going to be worried most about, okay? So, moving on, we also are going to uh, learn an equation today about work and how it's related to change in potential energy. So. Our work is equal to our negative change in electric potential energy. And this is an important equation to help us find uh, the work. And we need to note that it is negative because a negative change in potential energy would be positive work. So that's why the negative sign is there, in case you're wondering. Um, anyway, we're going to do a problem real fast. So I'll write out the problem, and then you guys try and do it. Pause the video, try and do it. Uh, and then I'll walk through it with you. So we're going to have a electric field, positive electric field going up the whiteboard, okay, and we're going to have a charge here, it's also positive, and the electric field is going to move this charge from here to here, we'll just say a distance of three meters, okay, three meters, and we're going to say our charge Q is equal to two coulombs, and our energy field is going to be equal to five newtons per coulomb, okay, and what we want to know is how, how much work is done by the electric field moving this charge from here to here, okay, so pause it right now, try and figure it out yourself, and I will go through it with you in one second, and all right, so hopefully you pause it, did it all by yourself, if not, I'm, I'm here to help you, so we know from physics equation sheet that work is equal to force times distance times the cosine of theta. And we also know from our equation sheet that force is equal to charge times the electric field. Okay? And uh, obviously the cosine here is just going to be, it's going to end up being 1, so we don't need to worry about the angle or anything. And moving on, we would have work is equal to charge times electric field times the distance, okay? Work is equal to quen, all right? And now we're just gonna plug in, five times two is gonna be 10 times three, and we're gonna have 30 joules as our answer, and that's gonna be our work done. Boom, there we go, okay? Looks good. Any questions, uh, just take a moment and pause and think about it. All right, and moving on, we're going to talk about another aspect of potential energy, about the voltage and its relationship to potential energy. So we know that our voltage is going to be equal to our potential energy divided by the charge, okay? But, like I said before, it's more important the change in potential energy than just what the potential energy actually is. So, we also have this equation, change in the voltage is equal to the change in potential energy over the charge, okay? So we have another quick practice problem here. So I'm gonna give you the charge is equal to negative 2.5 coulombs, okay? And we also have our change in voltage is gonna be 12 volts, okay? And we wanna know what will the change in potential energy be, okay? So pause the video again. Take a quick break and try and figure this problem out. And uh, right now, hopefully you pause it, and I'm gonna go 
into the problem and show you guys how to do it. So we're just gonna multiply the Q over this side and you're gonna have Q times the change in voltage is equal to change in potential energy. Pretty simple, right? Then we just plug in negative 2.5 coulombs times our 12 volts. And that will give us a negative 30 joules of energy and that's equal to our change in potential energy. So, awesome, you guys did it, way to go. Okay, now we're gonna move on to another part and just uh, write this down if you need it. Just look at it, wait for a second so you guys can, can uh, let it sink in. <laughs> and I'm gonna move on to the third and final part of today's lecture, <laughs> the uh, conservation of electric potential energy. So. Whatever we start out with, the amount of energy that we start out with has to equal the amount of energy we end up with. Very similar to physics 105, except now we're talking about electric potential energy. So we're just gonna have this simple equation here. Kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial is equal to our kinetic energy final plus our potential energy final, okay? So another really good equation. And I'm gonna give you a problem here in just one second. So, <clears throat> let's say we have a charge Q that is moving with an initial velocity of 10 meters per second, okay? And its final velocity, well, it's moving this fast and it has a potential energy of, a potential energy initial of 10 joules, okay? And, now it's going to pass through some field and it's going to change and we're going to end up with a final velocity now of 20 meters per second, okay? And we want to know what is the potential energy final. And we'll just say our charge has a mass of one kilo, all right? So, now using all of these things and the equation that we just learned, just pause the video real quick and work through this problem on your own. And if not, just hit play and I'm gonna go through it right now. So we're gonna start off with our kinetic energy initial, which is just one half, one half mass times velocity initial squared plus the potential energy initial. And that's going to equal our one half mass times velocity final squared plus our potential energy final, okay? So, we're going to subtract this guy over to here, and we'll end up with 1 half mass times velocity initial squared minus 1 half mass times velocity final squared plus potential energy initial, and that will equal our potential energy final. So, we solved for everything, and now we can start plugging in our numbers. So here we'll have, for the initial, we'll just have 10 meters per second squared, which is 100 divided by half. So we'll end up with 50, 50 joules here minus 20 meters per second velocity final squared. It's 400 divided by 2 is going to be 200 joules. Plus, we started off with 10 joules of electric potential energy. So... That is all going to equal our potential energy final, and we will end up with negative 140 joules of potential energy final. And there you go, there's the answer. So, well done everyone, I hope you could get through all the problems, and I hope you could understand a little bit more about electric potential energy. Uh, anyway, have a great day.